Uh, so um, I'm Remy Rivera. I am 37 years old. I was uh, born and raised in Puerto Rico until the age of 17, uh, until I joined the military. Uh, I was a, what you call a risk youth, you know, got in trouble. I had very good grades. <clears throat> so I thought, hey, I'm smart, so I can do all the right things and all the wrong things and learn uh, the age of 15 that, that that's it's what I told my guys in when I was a teacher, I say, uh, it's a lot of smart people, you know, in jail in the cemetery, you know. Yeah. Brain to smart doesn't equate to success in life. So um, I got lucky that I have a great grandparents that helped me. I joined the Navy first. I joined the United States Navy. I ain't spoke no English, so I kind of learned English in boot camp. And okay. I, as you can see, you know, 20 years later, they have a thick accent. And I worked as a surgical tech. Uh, I did as a urology technician. And then I worked on Gidmo, as a young guy working in Gidmo with the detainees. I did that uh, working in the U.S. Comfort that is currently helping or just left New York. I was there and cutting legs and doing all that stuff. And then finally, I deployed with Second Marine Division in my third deployment. In there, I learned that camaraderie with the, you know, with the grunts and the Marines. I lost about 20 Marines, including one of my best friends, uh, uh, Lance Corporal uh, Chris Sidney. Um, so I still talking to his family and, and all that stuff. And then they want to send me back to the hospital in Portsmouth, Virginia. I said, no, I want to stay with my Marines. And they're like, no, we got much training to you. We're going to send you back to the hospital. I'm like, no, I'm getting out. <laughs> so they gave me like a, you know, a, a combat valor medal, I am and all this trying to keep me in. I'm like, no. So I got out and uh, I, I got married and my wife at the time was going uh it was in the Navy. She was getting deployed. So I was in the house doing nothing, going to school. I'm like, it's a war going there. So I went walk into the Army uh, recruiter. I was like, hey, what you got for me? Right. So they got FO position for observer, you know, jumping bombs and stuff like that. I'm like, I don't speak English. I hate <laughs> I hate the radios, you know. I'm like yeah. terrified. But like, hey, we give you $27,000. And, you know, it's like, ah, oh, I did five years in the Navy for no money. Yeah, it's true, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So I joined the army. I went to something that is called green, uh, was it green to blue or no blue to green. Um, I did like a small boot camp uh, in Fort Knox at the time, and I kept volunteering. I went to Air Force School in Oklahoma. I volunteered to go airborne. I would call. I was kind of near the system. I didn't take no for an answer. So I was like, hey, I'm gonna go to airborne school, and then they find out that I asked the HRC there, the admin all the all the way to the top, and they smoke me maybe the push or disturb me and then <laughs> i went <laughs> i went to ranger indoctrination yeah. program at the time i didn't know nothing about it uh got destroyed a lot um but never quit so from that i went uh with first 75th ranger battalion first battalion in savannah georgia hunter army field and i served with them about five more deployments in combat um and it was you know one of the most stressful but uh, i learned a lot with them i learned uh high standards, never quit, you know, no excuses. You only have results, you know, it's right. always a way to figure something out. Right. Um, after that, I went to Korea, to the regular army. I tried to go SF, but they say, hey, you pick up to E7 too fast. You don't <laughs> gonna have enough time. I was kind of frustrated. So I went warrant officer away and I was warrant officer for a while. And then I was kind of done. I did my nine deployments, you know, I felt even and I decided to get out. I got yeah. out. I uh, always want to study medicine, so I went and finished my bachelor's degree in biomedical science. I met out with, uh, we were in the phone, it's like, hey, I, I was with a friend of mine, he's like, hey, Jerry, he's out. I'm like, he's out? I'm out. What's up? And he's like, hey, what do you want to do? So he's like, hey, you want to go to this school? We went to this school, we went to all these other EP schools. Um, and after some experience, we, and Joe can tell you the story about Puerto Rico, we're like, we need to do this. This is wrong. The way they treat the agents, the way they treat everybody, this is right. this stuff, yeah. the client, the stealing the contracts and all that. Yeah. Um, and Rapa was born in Puerto Rico during Huracan Maria, you know, right living on. in Florida and stuff like that. And, and uh, I still- why'd you, guys, why'd you guys come back here or back there <laughs> if you're in Puerto Rico? I, <laughs> no, I'm from Puerto Rico, but, uh, you know, it, it was rough. You know, I got family yeah. there. I grew up there. Um, we thought about going to Costa Rica, to Colombia. We got all these friends all over. Yeah. Uh, you know, JR moved here. I have a house here that I bought in uh, in Jacksonville about 10 years ago when I was in the, my wife was here in the Navy. So it's just, I don't know, everything just collapsed right. in one place. Yeah, uh, for sure. You know, yeah, JR, yeah, let's hear your story. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I can't top that, but um, I was born in Long Beach, California. 
so like the way I grew up was different how I saw um, the outside world. Like I right. grew up in a pretty bad neighborhoods in Long Beach and Compton and uh, was able to maneuver my way through that system, that gauntlet, because it's uh, I saw my first death at age of 13, you know, and it's hard, but it made me who I am now. My mm -hmm. mother died when I was eight years old, so that's where I get a lot of my uh, determination from, like, because right. I want to be able to um, bring bring that kind of sauce back to where I came from. Um, I really didn't know of my mother. I, I spent some time with her, but my mother was in the streets doing drugs, and she died of AIDS, um, and I didn't understand what all that meant because I was a baby, so... Um, Going through elementary and middle school, I was angry. I was I was an angry youth because I didn't understand why everybody had their mom and I didn't have my mom. And yeah, I had a grandmother and I had a support system with my aunties, but I don't have my mom. So I yeah. was bitter. So I used that bitter to, to try to push me through, even with sports and stuff like that. I was really good at football. I was really good at um, fighting when I was little. So I, I took all that anger and balled it up into that. And um, before you knew it, I was locked in with... Uh, the wrong crowd, you know, where I grew up. It was, it was, it wasn't wrong to me at the time because that's all I knew, you know, right. and, and and it still stays with me because it helps me pr uh, produce the type of man and energy I want to put out because that um that thick layer of skin. But I saw a lot of good people, intelligent people too, growing up in me in my neighborhood, and I wanted to be able to put a little of my touch on it too. I didn't want to say, okay, he was only famous because he played football or he rapped or he did this. Right. I wanted yeah. to be an entrepreneur when I was little. Um, fast forward, I went to jail, got out of jail, um, and my daughter was born. After jail, I went straight to the Army and then looked back. The Army saved my life. I went straight in as a 13th so what, what What put you into the military? Was it your daughter being born? Was it the, I don't want to go back in jail? Yeah. What was it that got your mind into the military? I didn't want that lifestyle no more. Um, right. I saw my mom and um, a lot of my family members go down that route, and it's glorified where I came from. It's like how many stripes you you got if you go to jail and how long you stay in. And right. I think our thinking in that section is is always going to be messed up because we have we always have a chip on our shoulder who did the most time, who had the most fights, who sold the most drugs, and at the end of the day, or who the best gangster is. And it's like we glorify that, but it's so much more. So when I went to jail it clicked. I was like, I can't embarrass my dad. My dad was a very um, known man in the neighborhood and cause he was a preacher. Yeah. And as soon as I got into jail, I was in the army two weeks later. Uh, I think it was eight months after nine 11, I was in the army. Um, a lot of people tried to discourage me from going. And um, a lot of people was like, don't do that. You're going to be programmed. And I had a plan. And when I got in the army, I didn't know what the FO was because my recruiter, they did all that stuff fast. <laughs> Took my, I, I just I just wanted to throw up my hands and get up out of here, you know? Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. But my, my first year, I quickly gravitated to what I was doing. And I think my second year, I went straight to Iraq. I did 55 months in combat, three Iraq tours, one Afghanistan, and then two as a contractor. But um, I quickly grew up. I understand who I was. I was already, um, I guess, battle-proven because what where I grew up at. But right. seeing soldiers or Marines or... Navy or airmen die in, in a uniform that it, it do something to you. So once I start seeing that, it just trans transitioned to me to become like a, uh, like good at what I do. Like, okay, these guys coming for us, we gonna come for them. The army, we have our own mission and you know, whether it's top secret or, or secret or just regular, we have our own AOs we got to protect. Yeah. And uh, I was with a good group of dudes every time I lost a lot of good dudes, but my first platoon name was called Rat Pack. We didn't have a platoon name when we right drove on. from Kuwait to, Kuwait to Iraq. We drove. So we yeah. was in a time where there was no um, doors on the Humvee and we had sandbags on our feet. Think about it. Like now that we armored up, but we drove from Kuwait to Iraq through Baghdad, through, through Baghdad with, um, with sandbags at our feet. We, yeah. we drove like that. So a lot, a lot of people, they don't hear them stories. When we right. got there, we had to burn our own shit. You know what I'm saying? We had to, yeah. we had to put together... Uh, where we was going to stay at and showers with water bottles. Like they don't tell them stories. And that's why me and Remy and a lot of us, like we the nine 11 babies, like that's yeah. what it produced. We are the kids that came after that, that put our life on the line. And we lost it. Like people might think me, Remy, or a lot of guys we hang with, we got bronze stars, silver stars. We heroes. We're not heroes. The, the heroes are dead. So I wanted to, to put that same energy to drive that force because we've been through so much. And if we stop what we're doing, Rat Pack is literally saving 
a lot of our lives. That's why we are better and connected because we have something to do with the purpose. And that's why we created what we do. Well, and that's like me, I said, that's me, my story. That's perfect. And you guys like by a hundred percent, like what you guys are doing. And as I said this before, it's, uh, it's changing the mindset of what we know as what professionals should look like, act like, and, and be, and expi- aspire to. We get yeah. young people coming into the industry, like we said, they don't really know what, what, which way's up, and right. they want to be put on the right path. But right. because they get into these, pardon my French, but shit companies, they then t- think that every company is like that. Every right. company is going to teach me like this. Everybody, right. Every company is going to pay me like this. Every company right. is going to put me in the uniform and it's going to look like this, but they don't understand that that's not the way it is. That's why we, that's why we trying to change that because when we graduated our first bodyguard school, we got sent to Puerto Rico, Hurricane Maria. Now us thinking in the military, we know the mission. We know the frag goes, we know what happened when it comes down. We got sent there and it was a terrible experience. Yeah, we asked, we asked for the logistics, I'm an operations, logistics, water, gas, what, who is the point of contact, all that. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we thinking, you know, that trust level. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you work with our companies. They don't have that. Like we're trying to do a contract to agent contract, correct? Hey, I got it. This is what I'm going to do for you, correct? Yeah. Regardless. These companies come and send you. They're like, I'll send you the contract later. i do this later. Later, later, later. What is net 30? Don't explain. I try to explain all my agents. Net 30, net 15, net yeah. this. If we pass that and... Uh, People don't do that and they take advantage. And the main companies that you said uh, don't have the standards. I, I tell my guys, hey, go with other companies, go work, go get there. I have worked with the top companies. I have worked on a resident uh, gate. I have worked on uh, uh, grocery stores, being Rat Pack owner. I go there, okay, what is programs they use? What is the report process? And you will go, when you go to the interview, and it's a thing that everybody over guys got their style. I don't need you to sh- shave your beard. I need not to have no tattoos. I want you to have your stuff, but I want you to look professional. I want you to know service first, respect. You go to these other companies and they, oh, you need to be shaved this and that. But when the interview is, it's tank tops, sandals, pants, uh, the uniforms yeah. that they give you, they take it out of your account, they don't even fit you. Yeah. And I'm like, this is, th- this is why the security company uh, p- paid these guys $10 an hour. You know, $11 an hour. And because they know they don't care about them. They care that they're going to rotate. These people quit tomorrow, they bring another person. They bring another person. I came in with a suit, my thing binder. I knew about manager for the company. Say, the people that were the managers didn't even knew what the name of the uh, license was for Florida. And I was Absolutely. like, is so I imagined them, okay, I got the big contract. I hired these people and I'm going to fire them. I pay them the minimum. They take you to CPR classes, but they don't even give you the CPR thing. They just like, blah, CPR, yeah. you know? Uh, they take you to the range, but they don't give you the certification. So they use in these poor guys and kids and ladies, put them in situations, and then you go to the news, something happened. It's like, look that person. Look how this person looks. Looks like a person who's like, yeah, but the company failed. Um, yeah. I tend to tell people, it's like, it's two things I tell my guys. Observe and report, correct? Yeah. And deter yeah. and 100%. prevent it. Yeah. Correct. You are no a, a a superhero. You're not a Navy SEAL. You're not a cop. You're not nothing. And if you cannot understand that, a lot of ah, I can. I want to work for you. I know how to fight. I know how to do this. I know it's like nah, I don't want that. I want thinkers. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, Berba Jiu Jitsu. Yeah. How can you <laughs> Yeah. How can you escalate like a drunk person, angry, jealous, looking for his girlfriend? How can you escalate this to like, hey man, I understand, brother. I've been there. Let's sit down and have a drink. You know, let's see. Let's figure this out. Um, now, when you guys were in Puerto Rico, though, um, what the contract that you had, you said, was a little bit convoluted when you were getting down there. But mm-hmm. what did what was your guys' expectations prior to setting up that contract or, or getting the contract? Did you did you think that because um, this this would have been your your first kick at the can as a company, correct? Yes. Yes. Yeah. No, no, yeah, as a as a together. Yeah. As together, yeah, right. So so what was your guys' expectations on that? I know you said it flopped, but what was what did you guys think it was gonna be? I, so I, the only expectations I, I had is yeah. is what I asked. Are hey, you gonna have a place that we can get food? We can get yeah. food, water, and gas. Right. And then you have a place to stay. And everything else we couldn't figure out. Uh, right. that, yeah, that's that was my expectation. I know I, I'm Miami Ranger, this and that, but 
everything switch. And the thing is that that's what I told my guys. And then when you have a group of guys there and they're like, you know, getting paid, don't pass nothing, there's no food, there's no distance and that, then like, whoa, what's going on? Right. And it comes back to us. And we feel really, uh, uh, we have to take care of our guys. You know, I say E7s, Sorry. officers and stuff like that. So I need to take care of those. So we take out our own pocket to get these guys back home to do this and do that. So we, you know, we're like, whoa, this is yeah. out of control. GR, do you agree? That was your no, I, 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 Yeah, so I did contract him before and I thought that it was going to be the same and it wasn't. And that's what opened my eyes. Like, you can really treat um, a person like this. And then on top of that, these guys are veterans that have been through fucked up situations, excuse my French, but you can, you can nearly cause them to relapse or whatever they came right. from because not even civilians care about us. We, yeah. we, we, we did that for, in the military with the, with the flag on our right shoulder, but at the end of the day, we're civilians now. We know what we're doing. You're sending us out there. We have to sleep on the floor in the lobby. You know, like we, the yeah. first night, the, I was the advance. I slept in the car the first two nights, the yeah. rental car. You know, and, and me coming from my situation is like, no, nah, this ain't going to happen to nobody else because everybody we ask, oh, it's his fault, it's his fault, Subcontract after subcontracted, nobody took responsibility because right. everybody went in for the money and didn't yeah. care about the agent. We are agent centric. We're passing over profit. We, me and Remy is over a hundred thousand dollars of our own money in this company because we believe in the expectations from legacy, not 20 years. This is legacy for us. Everybody thought that Rat Pack was just wanting to be bouncers or work in the club or, or do little things. That was our gateway in because Remy went to a bodyguard school. I've been to three. Yeah. Nobody, they taught me what I needed to know, but they didn't give me a job because I wasn't cookie cutter. I didn't fit the bill. You know what I'm saying? And that happened to me four times in my life was when I applied for to be a warrant officer in the military. When I went to go apply for academy and I had neck, I had tattoos on my neck. I passed everything I had to pass, but they was like, uh, that the client don't want that. Okay. The clients are always different, you know, and, and no disrespect to any other company, but I want Rat Pack to come in as you are, and there's a client for you. If you Absolutely. got dreads or you got a bald head, like all of we all got bald head. Somebody gonna want us, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, I want people to understand, like this is a home. Like people used to count me out, like Jr. Like like a basketball team. I was always getting picked last, and then last people that got picked, they didn't go on these missions. So I start creating my own clients my own situations, my own details, and then I start publicizing it. Like, you didn't give me this chance, here it is. Or people would say, they would, um, I would call it, they would uh, little bro you, hey, come do this mission, and I'm gonna pay you 200 bucks. Like, what? Like, you know, like you paying for my experience in the military, which is 14 years, you paying for all the schools that I've been to, and then my knowledge of my soft skills, not what I look like or how tall I am or how right. fast I can shoot my gun. If I can shake your hand, and if I can look you in the eye and tell you, I'm going to get you from point A to point B, safe, and make sure and genuinely care. In the security industry, if you do a client, it's God forbidden that you get to know that client. Yeah. Like, you, you're supposed to be a robot. Me, us, Rat Pack, we don't get to know you, how your family, how your kids, because that's how I, I could work better. I lost too many guys in Iraq and Afghanistan to be going through that situation. You understand? Yeah. So that's why, that's why you hear the passion coming out of my voice, because... We are upset and that's what draws the positive energy because Remy worked at all these companies. I have been contracting. I went down range last year in Afghanistan and I was contracted for a company, no name. And I'm, I'm doing my thing, you know what I'm saying? I'm promoting me, whatever. But yeah, I work for the big, but I, I, I already see what I want. I'm, I wanna go after government contracts. Now, and I'm putting it out there. Rat Pack is going after government contracts. These people were taking my um, logos and my stickers and my clothes and pissing on them and throwing them in the, in the like literally this was humans that was doing this veterans downrange that was hating on what, what we was doing so i knew i said you know what rat pack is going somewhere special because why would you take notice and do that so i already mm -hmm. knew then i have people that i thought that i could trust and bring on will get to know me get to learn me and then go use it for other companies then i had a guy i brought on and then he had he he, he asked permission to go be a certain position at another job that was going to pay him salary go we want yeah. Rat Pack is passion over profit. We ain't we ain't paying salary right now. Right now yeah. we're sweat equity. I put that out there. Absolutely. But Absolutely. Every, all my guys are all in, you know. Yeah. So that's what we about. Rat Pack is me and Remy won't be able to eat until the rest of our employees have ate and their families. 
But I had him go learn me and then have his company try to buy me out. And they brought fifty thousand dollars to the table and said, Hey, I, I like what you're doing. I'm gonna do the Pac-Man effect, take over everything you're doing and take away your veteran status and your minority status. I stopped him right there. I said, look, if you think $50,000 don't even make me lift an eyebrow, like yeah. you really you really have a situation on your hands. Like money is not gonna bribe me. This is my life. Like this is my family. Like this is love right here. This is, this is a, a known name. This is what we're doing. We believe in it. Then I had an offer for 500,000 and then another million dollar offer to buy the company. And me and Remy, we stay in solid because we believe in everything we talk about and we understand. We had a lot of flack, but if you yeah. notice, we all we did was scale up to the highest, uh, what, what the military taught us. Yeah. Hey, you in this platoon, rep your platoon. Right. This is it right here. You, you, you put in that best foot forward and that's why we are Rat Pack. What did you guys think when you were getting into the company? Did you think that this was going, obviously not going to be easy. You there, you guys know that, but <laughs> what did, what were your expectations for the company and what were some of the struggles that you had to overcome to get, let's say where you are right now. Uh, so at least for, for us, I think both. Um, so I have, I have a page here that I remember we sat down through the phone and, and I know you guys kind of see it but uh we'll put this on youtube it's, it's, people will see it yeah so this is our first conversation we have correct right like, on the phone right you know that's like cool that, that's hey, cool that you save that that's awesome perfect. you know then we got the part how we're gonna do it and then the yeah. schoolhouse that is opening right now like okay we're gonna this is a class of people doing we're gonna do we're gonna go on the bed team. we're gonna do this how classes we're gonna go how much more we can make this yeah. is just talking about two years ago three years ago and uh you know, and, and because I work with other companies, I got out of the military and I went to California to do my associates and I work with a company and I say, hey man, I work, I literally, I was bodybuilding and uh, I need pro, uh, meal prep and I say, hey, I work for your company for free. Don't pay me nothing. If you like me, after a month, you do it. I work from driver all the way to marketing director. I didn't know what marketing director was. Yeah. I went to Google and I Google guerrilla marketing. I learned all the system. I went and learned the kitchen. I got like all this food service. I learned the president's job. I learned the CEO's job. And they were paying me, you know, really low. And in my transition, the transition was, I'm going to go to Florida. You're going to let me bring your company here. I'm going to run it here in the East Coast. And we're going to grow. And I was excited. But I was working for somebody else. I knew I, I never saw myself as an entrepreneur. I saw myself as an operations guy. And I learned, man, people use you use you, use you, use you, and abuse you, correct? Yeah. So when we decided to do uh, rap pack, uh, the obstacles was, the obstacles was, uh, we thought we we're gonna, you know, go grow fast. It's gonna be like from here to the top, correct? Yeah. And there are, there are really, you get a lot of obstacles. You got people that come behind you. I have people staying in my house in Florida and then stealing from us and then going around and calling all our clients and, you know, talking bad about us going to the Department of Agriculture and reporting us and then sit down with the guy to see, I'm very good at paperwork, say, so, hey, this is our insurance, this is our this, this is our that, and the guy say, man, don't worry. I got a lot of people calling about you. You're straight up with me, you got everything right, you know, you just keep pushing. Yeah. Uh, then we have uh, a big a big accident or the, our first like, you know, crazy event and Ja was gone. So me and Ja have our first, you know, fight and vision and and that you know that took a lot of energy because we're best friends you know and sometimes in business you know we're best friends we love each other but going like that so um that hit me really really hard you know jar saved my life in 2017 he sent me to his house then sent me to uh rush hospital with the wonder what your care network you know and then he you know he told me about doing this doing that so when i was able to come back and see those those symptoms i was like okay you know i'm going down he came back and was like hey you ready you ready Hey, let's start again. And he went back and pushed. So that's one thing we understand. You know, the obstacles is our own disabilities, correct? Also, um, the understanding the industry is a lot of dinosaurs that are there that haven't changed. Yeah. And we're coming to trying to switch everything and change in their minds. Like, you can put nothing in Instagram. It's like, um, this is no secret squirrel, ranger, seals. Yeah, this yeah, is just yeah. providing yeah. security. Yeah. I want to show yeah. all the guys what we do. It's no secret, guys. Yeah. Um, and then understanding also that, uh, at least for me and my knowledge, the government contract, learning that system, learning all the certificates, even though I'm very good at research, 
I need help and going into those uh, places, you know, SBB, SCORE program, and all that and learning. Yeah, the, the, when you're going out under the government contracts, it's a whole different ball game. Like yes. you're, you're getting your end cage number. You're getting your, you're, you're I got all that. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're not, it's no more playing with little boys. It's, it's, no. you really got to know your stuff and be squared away. But yeah. the thing with contracting overseas is they love guys like you. They love people that are honest and they can absolutely do their job because those two things, funny enough, you would think that they're the most common and the most, you think that everybody knew that, but nobody's honest. Nobody gives a shit about the next person. I'm just, mm -hmm. I'm just going to undercut you guys and you guys can go take a kick and I'm going to just hire the cheapest guy I can. And, and, and some, some guy, some guy that's going to make $150 yes. in Afghanistan. <laughs> yeah, contractors. I, I came in with my team when we did, uh, when we did, um, Georgia, correct. And, uh, the COVID helped me out. And I bring all my guys last second, they're coming in. I get them room. They're contractors. They, I told them, Hey, this is net 30. No lodging, no nothing, or whatever. Well, I mean, yeah. Yeah, 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 I mean, it's like, man, I need to get these guys a place to stay. I need to figure out. My president, Sean, drove and give them, you know, the right uniform. Because a lot of people try to say, no, man, you need to, you know, we teach, we teach them. Yeah. Um, and, and nobody's like, you guys are contractors? Yeah, we're by myself. Yes, I'm a contractor. But how do you feel when somebody takes care of, they take care of you? Yeah. You know, when they, if, you, if you're in a ship and I bring you a coffee, I don't know you, but we contracted, yeah. I bring you a coffee. I order a pizza and everybody eats, you know? You come in late for a contract, I was like, hey, man, I got your back. Yeah. Like, that's human nature to take care of. We can be contractors. We can be security. But just having that human care of others, uh, people excel. You know, their trust is bigger. The, the mission gets taken care of better. And those people that are going to be looking at you for later on, you know. Yeah, I want to work in that stage in Centrix. Uh, somebody have the same contract. I want to work for Rapa. Rapa pays more, correct? Take care of me. So when other people try to call the agent, they're like, no, no I'm good. So they, that, that, that people have to contact me and say, hey, Rami, you got 100, bucks, 100 people that you can? Yes, I yes. But this is the price I need to pay them. So now the agent's going to be centric to us. So that's, that is the game, centric. I'm gonna, they're going to take care of me. They're going to pay me on time. They're going to be honest. I tell people, hey, this is what I'm making from you. I don't care. It's not a secret. I, I, I'm, I need to make money. I need to pay my bills. So I'm going to make this. Are you okay with this? Yeah. You know? And people say, like, yes, I'm good. Okay. Transparency is a beautiful thing. We try to yeah. be as honest as possible because at the end of the day, like a lot of people, a lot of things we went through, a lot of people was not honest. It was all yeah. about competition. And I told the company, um, I said, I just happened to be the CEO and Remy happened to be the CEO, but we all CEOs, you know what I'm saying? We, we're the Avengers of the security game. This is the new Silicon Valley. And in, 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 that, in that iPod era and, 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 and Apple and all that, that was all created all under one roof. And we are a bunch of, that's all we is because Rat Pack Worldwide Security and Consultant and Corporation, we're an incorporation underneath us. We're opening up nine more streams of revenue, which is mm -hmm. Rat Pack Angels, Rat Pack University, which is going to teach the agents 30 days how to be, how to dress, how to know, how to know the soft skills, EP, uh, taser, handcuff, everything, resume writing, right now and then we're going to open up rat pack cleaning service because every time we bid for a contract they ask for janitorial services we're yeah, not dumb we, we all we already pre-planned all this and yeah. now all of our agents that's underneath us that's the top agents they're going to own a piece of that that's yeah. what they give back to their family so we feed our agents we feed our family and then at the end of the day me and remy can go to sleep at night and say you know what we change your lives because it's all about changing lives you yeah. know that's all it is yeah, we're all getting older. Our lives aren't much longer. So yeah, might, as well change, might as well change the guys younger than us. No, I, yeah, I completely, completely agree 100%. Um, were you guys a little fearful when you guys thought of, okay, we're going to start a business? Or was it just gung-ho? It was gung-ho. Like, yeah. like Remy came with the awesome... Um, I'm the worry guy. I'm the worry guy. I'm like, <laughs> worried, I'm like yeah. no, yeah. Uh, no, no. Yeah. And yeah, 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 I, yeah. I'm like, no, no. I, and yeah, I, I, so I, yeah. Yeah. We still, we still, I'm fearful every day. Yeah. Every day. Talking here, so we we were fear both, all day. We were both FOs. He's the type yeah. of FO that's going to, he going to send back the radio transmission. Like, are you sure we, we going to drop on the target? <laughs> Me, I'm going to drop. Like, yeah. I heard what you said. Yeah. Like, I'm going to just, just right. You know what I'm saying? Just fire yeah. and drop that. You know? Yeah. It's, it's already airborne. Uh, it's okay. already coming. Yeah. It's yeah. Gone. yeah. Yeah. 
That's hilarious. Did you guys? Um, no, it's a good thing if you if you look at something. Uh, okay. The personality, the personality type test. Have you yeah. taken that? Um, yeah. So like I learned, I'm like ESTJ. I don't say things really nice and, and I'm very direct and I don't care about like emotions. I care about mission yeah. and JR is ISTJ. So that's two of the four, you know, um, security personalities. And it was yeah. just interesting uh, me learning that because it helped us and you know, we make all our guys to take it because it helped us uh, for them to understand how I, I talk or what is my, my, my good and bad. And he has, and, and we know how they react. So it's, it's really interesting how me and JR's personality, so two-headed monster works. Uh, That's good. But uh, yeah, I'm always fearful. I'm always thinking numbers, you know. But I know the vision that he's brought in. He's, he's been right most of the time, so I, yeah. I trust him. Well, it's good that it's uh, <laughs> No, we really, we really work like a team. Like when, he, when I'm sleeping, he's working. When, when he's sleeping, I'm working. Like we really developed that over the last years because he's a night owl. And I need my naps. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm old. You know? I, I, but um, I, I, I pick up the slack when he goes to sleep and he picks up mine. But we generate the ideas. He put it into motion. And I, I go out there and I go sell it. Whatever it is. Whatever he gives. Whatever we put out there, we go sell it. Whatever, and that's why you see our marketing and our brand so heavy. Because we haven't went to go ask on loans. Even COVID-19, we haven't put in no small business loans yet. Because I told Remy, I said, if we invest ourselves, we all in. And, and all of our agents are all in. They, they, they only work on the jobs of EP or if they go do security jobs, boxing events, MMA events, uh, uh, Super Bowl is coming up, other, like we got lounges, we got other accounts in the city, but that's how they make their money. So how do we get them to all believe in? Because it's one mission, one vision, and they understand. Like each, all of them have their own history and where they came from and what companies they work for and know that they've been screwed over because you're just a person. But Rat Pack, not. I know your family. I know your kids. I know your life. I know what I po I'm supposed to know as a boss because when I walk down the hallway every morning, I want to make sure I'm checking in with you, doing a psychological okay. profiling. And if you need a break, go home because I don't need you here with your mental messed up, whatever it is. We yeah. check each other yeah. all the time. Like, hey, go take a nap, dude. Or, hey, mm -hmm. take two days off. That's yeah. it. So let's talk about your agents. What do you look for in a strong agent? When somebody's coming through that door to give you a resume or a CV, what are you, what are you looking up and down for? Well, actually, all the agents that are part of the front office, I have scouted and recruited myself. Right. Um, and um, we, me, me and Remy as a whole, we, we want to feel the positive energy. Like, I don't, so, so if I hire a, a vice president or a president, I am not looking for that quality right now. I'm seeing potential. In the yeah. next five years, can you grow to that potential? And why are you growing? Can you be fierce? Um, I met my human resources director at a car wash. Car wash. She was yeah. working. I was with my father. And um, I had just moved to Florida. And, you know, I approached her, like, you know, asked her a couple of questions of what she did, who she was, and everything like that, and thought she would be a good face for what me and Remy was putting together. Mm -hmm. She started off as a security agent went to team leader, to senior team leader, to office manager, to human resources because of her potential. Now she's getting ready to go and enlist in the United States Army because what she see her brothers are doing. Right. So she wants to be, able, and now she's the president of Rat Pack Angels. So you see how it goes. And that's yeah. with everybody in the company. My East Coast director, he was my soldier 11 years ago. He was 18 years old. Um, I ran back into him in California. He was homeless, homeless veteran. I did not know that because I was getting my help myself at the UCLA Medical Center. But my heart is so big. So when I was like, I'm in California, he hit me up. He came, he stayed. I was like, why he not going home? But I'm not really tripping because I missed the company. Right, right. He yep. told me, and I saw a vision of him in a dream and said, you know what? This is what's going to happen. I moved him to Florida, put him through the best bodyguard schools and helping him and put him into college and put him on his way. Like yeah. it's, it's so easy to do that, but some people don't, they don't even want to tell that information. Like I know what I needed when I needed yeah. help and what I didn't get. So when I see that me and Remy are very agent, we care about our agents. Yeah. Every agent I know like the back of my hand and I know their personality. Yeah. Like and our vice president, um, my best ranger of all times. You know what I mean? Like this guy is amazing. 11 deployments. Yeah. For two years, he'd been combating, you know, the same thing. He finally, you know, I was like, Gabe, 
uh, you've been there, I've been there, you know? Yeah. And JR is like, JR, it's like, I call it like, they're all behind. We're like in this, and we know what they're gonna do in a couple of years, but they can see it. So he's moving to Florida with me. There are people moving to us. He's gonna stay in my house, you know, he's gonna take over. The energy okay. he just brought, he just got called from other companies to hire him. So yeah, you can awesome. see that click, you know, and, and, and I'm doing a lot of business and a lot of stuff. It's like, man, what, what will complete me, correct? And he's having a vision. And what is my vision? Helping at risk youth and their Yeah. So that's the idea. Uh, so rap is, is like that. And people's like, ah, oh, you guys need to change. You guys need to do the, the suit thing. Or you guys, they need to quit. So like, man, if I, it, and this is a mentorship events, you know, they're trying to, people really successful. It's like, and I told him, I said, hey, man, if, if I change what I'm doing right now, uh, I may make a lot of money, but I will never want to do it, correct? Yeah. So the change of the culture and creating a culture, as you may know, takes a lot of time or takes Absolutely. time. Also yeah. changing the industry and, and be able to find the right people, you know, that's going to happen. Um, yeah. Having these opportunities, you know? Yeah, it's just hard to say like changing the industry because we all know that it's not just the clients, it's not just the companies, it's some of the people that are in the industry that are just yeah. such a bother like they're just they're so negative they just think that like and i think that like you guys were saying like you know other people are saying oh you know you're supposed to wear suits at this you're supposed to wear that at that mm -hmm. buddy i've run 10 million dollar contracts don't tell me what i'm supposed to do or not. <laughs> like, i make about business to wear yeah. whatever like to piss people off to let them know that because at the end of the day when you cookie cut us and put us in that jello pudding statue yeah. we all follow the same guidelines i never wanted to fit in with the populace yeah. But at the end of the day, the same knowledge that you attain, I look like this and I attain the same knowledge. If I go out with my family or my friends, I'm still like this. I'm always concealed weapon holder and I'm always play, playing a protector because yeah. you never know. At the end of the day, I live a martial lifestyle. Yeah, I might look like I'm from Long Beach and I do, I, I got my mannerisms, <laughs> yeah. but my martial lifestyle, my, my violence of action is way different than the next executive protection agent that's me i'm an ep agent at heart I, I do this around the world for dignitaries my first client was vita guerrera but at the end of the day you got to hone in to what you know and that's why me and remy challenge all of our veterans all of our veterans and all of our agents to be better don't yeah. stop the sky is not the limit like we motivate each other we this is what we do and yeah. the industry is just the next number you know they they i got a lot of offers to become everybody else ceo now and I'm turning them down because at the end of the day, this is what I believe in. Are oh, you coming back to Academy? You come work for Costellas? Are you going to Triple Canopy? Um, I don't know yet. What, whatever the money takes me, because that's, that's money. I don't care. Rat Pack is passion. Yeah. They only want me because I'm a number and they want to be able to get that check to feed them and that's then give me what they baby, think right? I deserve. Yeah, that's it. You know? For sure. hundred percent. I totally agree with that. Yeah. Um, what's your guys' best form to retain staff? It's a Trust. hard one in this industry. So I, I do, I doing the math, man. Um, so this is what we learned. We got 15 guys. They're the top guys, correct? 75% uh, of, uh, it takes, what do you call that? Opposite. Only 25% of the people get retained by the company, the security yeah. companies that work, correct? It's, it's, it's like a rotating door, correct? But right. what we understand is it's cheaper to retrain or find a position to a person that they're not being successful at the current position than hire a new person and yeah. train them, correct? Yeah. And I really don't care what you know. I care like, do you buy into the culture? You know, right. and if I care about you, correct, and you can see a vision and I put you in your better and benefits and I walk, literally walk you in. We walk, we have walk in like 13 guys to Kaiser University. Yeah. Correct, because it's one class a month for four months. You get this, you get your benefits. That's $2,000 that you can get in your pocket. You can get out your apartment, you know? Yeah. So. If you see me doing that with you, if you see me going and doing the missions with you, variants, and we learn also known variants, people, people like to be taken care of. People like to be part of the, of, we are society, you know, we're, as biology, in biology, you can see that people that get by themselves, you know, they, they, they go down. When you're in a, in a good churches, correct? You got your, your groups, your, your clubs, you know, everything. We all about groups. So if you create that culture in Rat Pack, they retrain. And we also yeah. tell them, hey, don't be fearless to, to go get another job. Your position will be here. Yeah. Right? Go get learned. Um, we, we talk always about, about my daughter. You know, we, I'm from Puerto Rico, and Jay, I always say this. You know, 
I don't have, you know, a, a what called the gold, the chills that you got from oh, Ireland or, yeah, or yeah, this. Yeah. We don't have it. This is something I want to pass to my daughter and be like, yeah. Yeah, my, my dad was one of the first agents in Rap Pack. My dad was the, the vice president. My dad was in Rap yeah. Pack, you know, custodial services. So that is what, what how we, I seen um, um, that we were training people in, in that top level. And, and they, they leave themselves. You know, a couple of guys just left. They, they didn't saw the vision. I understand something. Money is really important, you know. And oh, they, don't, is, yeah. and they get hired, you know. And, and I understand that. At the security agents level, what we are doing, you know, using programs like Indeed, you know, like big, sometimes we don't have Indeed and stuff like that uh, to hire them. And then what we do, we put them in a, in a roster, we pay them on time, we always be honest, hey, this contract fell through, or, you know, I'm looking for this. And that prevents all these people getting frustrated that, you know, a job fell through. We're just very honest. So now they're in the list and we're, hey, you wanna be in our list? Yes, so a job comes, send them on the email, First, first, you know, first person to answer, you know, gets the job, and uh, and then trying to train our guys. Everything we strive. So all these guys, we're teaching them about entrepreneurship. We're teaching them about the IRS, the case numbers, the NAICS, all that. Uh, right. And we tell them, hey, if you don't want to do it and you just want to be an agent, that's okay too. Right. And how you can see, we call them security agents, yeah. no security guards, no top cop, top flight, no nothing. We're very serious. You're a security agent. And you have to respect yourself. So when people try to be respectful to any guards that we see out there, we call them out. You know, mm -hmm. this 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 is the largest industry in the United States. Three about three million people are in the security industry. Just in in Florida, it's about ninety thousand people. Yeah, I I believe so, that. I believe that. Yeah. Uh, what are your guys' visions going forward for this company, especially brand wise? Like, where where do you see yourselves in five years? So um, I answer that because we all we always talk about that and they, we beat that into the, the front office. Every day we say good morning to each other and we put the energy out there. We say our prayers and we get to work. We hit the we, we get we hit the road running. But five years. Um, expect Rat Pack to be on the Forbes magazine yeah. and gross and, and, and worth over five hundred million dollars, but not because of the money, because we took care of our agents, because we cornered the market. We are the new wave of security. We're going to have a lot of give back. And I have, I had had negative um, messages in my LinkedIn, on my Instagram, personal emails. And it's just sad because it's like some people that I trusted or some people that I befriended or some people that I really thought that was, that was a part of me. Not knowing that the dream they heard me and Remy talk about, they missed some steps. So we, me and Remy always wanted to create a university because we went to a lot of bodyguard schools. So we wanted to create that. That's Remy's baby. The university in three years, if we do right 80% of that, the GI Bill comes back and pays a check for each military veteran that comes through our course. Right. We want to give back. Hey, if you don't want to work for Rat Pack after 30 days of transforming what you learned in the military or wherever into a security agent, you could go work for anybody, but just remember Rat Pack trained you. We, we, not, we, we just want to put it out there, but we're going for government and federal contracts. We have a huge EP following, um, school and church security, university, all female uh, Rat Pack um, angels. They call the angels, I created that. Um, it's going to be all female exec protection team because only China has that. So I'm going to create that. I want them to dress how they dress, however they dress in different scenarios to say, if this one of your clients wants to go to Vegas and y'all want to dress like you're part of the entourage, as long as you know, you're armed. And, and there's a, there is a, there is a lane for you. If you want to dress in your black suits and roll around with the mayor or the governor, yeah. there is a lane for you. But that's why I created the, the um, females. Um, we're doing bounty hunting services. We creating that armor truck, tactical driving, and then the firearm academies that's going to be ran by, um, one Green Beret and one West Point uh, veteran. Awesome guys. I handpicked them too. And uh, it's a blessing to have them um, in a part of our team. But Rat Pack is going for everything. And then the last spill, which I want to give you my last spill because it's gonna be live, this is going to be live on the air, <laughs> but I'm going to tell you on the phone. Second to last is we want to uh, compete against the vents in a ADT, home security. Yeah, yeah. And the process of is having the rats run through the house to secure the house. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Digital. I already have it in my mind. My mind, I'm like uh, Walt Disney. No, seriously, like I'm like yeah. a little Walt Disney. When I went to Disneyland, a lot of people they saw the rides. 
I, I wanted to know who was engineering the riots. Yeah, yeah, I was, yeah. always wanted to go behind the scenes. My dad said, you always wanted to go meet the people push and play. Or oh, you don't, you, don't wanna, you don't want to meet the guys behind the scenes. <laughs> See, I was, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, that's yeah, what I wanted cool. to do. Yeah. But I, I want to be able to create that. And like Remy was telling you earlier, a lot of us can't trace our family lineage back to anything. You know, I have an Irish last name. I'm African-American and Cuban. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I want to be able to say, you know what, you work for Rat Pack, you don't have that lineage. The shield means a lot. The person in the middle is me. The person to the right is Remy. These, these are actually rats. These are us. This is our life. So when people come to Rat Pack, what the black with the yellow mean? What inspired the black and yellow? What inspired the rats in there? How do they really look? Do you know where they come from? Like, we have history. So 20 years from now, people could be like, my dad, like Remy said, my dad worked for Rat Pack. He was one of the first rats. Um, in society, rats are a negative term but actually rats balance out the ecosystem in the situation they eat all the trash they clean up everything and make sure things are good because some humans are nasty so mm -hmm. the reason why they not the rats are in their house is because you're nasty yeah. you know yeah. so the security industry is nasty and that's why we're here you know yeah. we're here to clean it up and do it our way and we want our own clients we don't want your clients but we never forgot how we was treated well i'm really glad that you guys think that way because um there's very I would say, say there's few, but there's that mentality is what needs to be broadcasted throughout the entire industry and not just broadcasted, but it needs to be retained and it needs to be actually worked on because you get people that like, they'll, they'll come to you and they'll say, Oh, this is a dumb idea. Well, why are you going through all those ventures? Like, why don't you just stick to your, like you said, stick to your lane, just do that. Oh, you, now you're treading on me. Now you're going into, uh, now you're going into armed services. That's my gig. No, it's not your gig. You're doing it wrong. I'm trying to come in here. I'm a businessman just like they are, right? Like, and I, I love the, 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 the inspiration and the, the, the motivation that you guys have behind when you talk. You can tell that you're actually passionate about it. You're not here for the, I mean, everybody's here for the money if you really want to look at it that way, but you're actually here to do something. And that's very rare because most people, if you get all, uh, ex law enforcement or ex military a vet just coming into the industry, they're just looking for a way out because they right. they're now no longer getting they're maybe getting a little bit of a pension, but now they need to supplement it somehow. And the best right. way to do it is through the security industry because that's the best way they know how to. And, but, and it doesn't the make, thing but it doesn't make them good business people. That's Correct. the thing, and they don't for, they forget that. Oh, I was in the military for 14, 20 years. I don't give a shit. What does that, what did that mean? Correct. Like a business person? No, well, no it exactly. doesn't. It just like, so this, anyway, is, this is what I tell sometimes that I learned. Uh, I got, I'm in very, in very, in, in the, I learn it, correct? I'm a veteran. I have PTSD or were you a good veteran? You know, I know a lot of shit, you know, shit, shit back there. And so it's like, so now you also shit back with PTSD. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and you have to understand that. But one thing I tend to tell them is like, the sea is so big, correct? Yeah. The industry is so large, it's so many niches in the industry sure. and so many flavors and so many clients and so many is. So when people come to me and we have people that try to steal this, I try to steal that, it's like, it's okay. Yeah. I put everything out and I tell people, hey, you don't want to wear Rat Pack? We got something called Rat Pack in a box, you know, start business. I teach you everything. I show you how to do this. I show you how to do that. I help you when you need to get your licenses. I, it's your business, you know, you start off Rat Pack in, in, a, in a box and you do it. And put your own name, put all that. My friends that call me and some other stories that we can talk to you uh, offline where we can back some of the people went and started the company without us and telling us and then they come around and they want them. It's like, I want, and they call me, hey, what you, how you did this? Hey, I went to this program. Hey, how you did that? Yeah, I went to this one. Hey, let me send you my website designer. Like, I don't have ill on anybody. I want everybody to be successful because your success or my success doesn't depend on your success. 100%. Correct. So we're gonna grow, and then people that try to undercut us and do this, hey, we see you at the top. We be okay. You know, yeah. it's different levels. You're gonna get your clients. You're gonna get my clients. You do. You're gonna you. pay yeah, exactly. So I don't understand this. You're stealing my client. You're doing this. You don't put your name here. You don't do that. And, and it's like I play the game. Yeah, that's like, that's that's a common thing that really kind of confused me when people say steal my client. If your client wanted to stick with you, it's like a woman, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, why, why they came to me because they trust me. They try, they, they know that my service is going to be not better than yours. It may not be better than yours, but maybe the personality behind it, or maybe the stat, the people that I'm sending you are better than what you're doing and possibly you're doing something wrong. And if this is the first, this isn't the first time you said, 
I'm going to, you've had somebody steal my clients. Maybe you need to work on something. Maybe it's not everybody else. Maybe it's you. Joel, and that's, and that's but, why I see that in you guys for sure. It's a sad story oh. that you can talk to you about a big client and uh, I let him tell you, but it's, 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 it's heartbreaking, you know? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so but let me, that's crazy that you said that because like my fire is always lit, but this was just one of the biggest logs that got thrown in there. So me getting into the EB, EP industry, um, I had to market myself a different way because I was not chosen all the time. I knew yeah. the skills, but my determination or my mistake for confidence was cocky and they didn't want to pick me, okay. whatever it was. Yep. I don't know. I don't want to use none of that factor, religion, race. I don't know. I wasn't picked. So I start promoting myself and working for free. Right. 2009, my first client was Vita Guerrero. Fast forward, I got clients in, on the red carpet all over the world. When this stuff lifts up, I'll be going to um, Dubai. But the client I just got off of that was very important to me, and he was going through an addiction, they sent him to South America to get um, – therapy because he was going through a, a drug addiction. No. I was on it for three weeks. He fell in love with me. I cared about the kid. I seen where he was going. Yeah. In the industry, I was the sub of the sub. Yeah. It's who you know. Yeah. So when they called me, my uncle called me, was like, AJR, hey, I got a client for you. you. Need to be ready in, in three days. What? Like, what is it? Oh, it's yeah. this guy. All right, cool. I don't know who this guy is, but okay. What is, what's the pay? All right, I'm going. Who's the client? Okay. They send right. me a flight. They send me out there. Tell me the logistics. I do my advance. I go out there. I got to know my client so well that the second or third day, he was telling the manager and the people that hired the bigger company, hey, you know what? We don't need you no more. JR, we want JR and we want to use Rat Pack. Yeah. The, guy came, the guy that hired me came at me with a benches. Yeah. Um, he was like, that's my client. Don't never do this. It's a short, certain protocol in the security industry. Like, like I'm young. I've been doing this since 2009. So I, I already understand if, if you're not treating your girl, right. She don't want you no more. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna treat her with respect. That's me, but I'm not disrespecting you. I understand because I don't want nobody stealing my clients, but yeah. I'm treating this client that I care for. I respect. I'm making sure that his well being, and I'm gonna put this out there. When you go get on the client, it's not protecting them from the outside world. It's from themselves. Some of them are their biggest enemies. <laughs> Harry, Harry, my client, yeah. I'm going to throw his name out there. He was, he, he was going through a lot of stuff, yeah. you know? And at the end of the day, I, I just had to be there. I saw some crazy stuff in South America. Like, I've been on some dangerous missions in Afghanistan and Iraq and in Kuwait and Dubai and Africa. But at the end of the day, this scared me the most because it was mentally affecting what I was doing, my energy. Right. Um, I end up doing the job for him, bringing him back from therapy to Los Angeles, Hollywood Hills, stayed with him for another, uh, another week. This was right before Christmas. I left. They fought to keep me and the mom, but the, the security company didn't want me because they said I was overstepping my boundaries. Okay, I got it. Send me home. Yeah. I'd rather be home anyway. I run, I, I run my own company. Yeah. You talk to yeah. me like I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, I got yeah. it. So I go home. Harry, he um, texts me about some money situation. And I was like, okay, let me see what I can do. Because they was the managers take care of his situation. Like he really lives scot-free. Right. So I'm talking to him, telling him about, hey, after Christmas, you want me to come back? Blase, blase. Fast forward to the story, I get a text message and um, asking me about some pictures about the client. And I said, um, you know, the client got it. Yeah, I, I sent it to him the other day. Long pause. You know, we just buried him. What? We oh. buried him. And, it, and I, like my whole world stopped. I said, what, are you playing? Is this kind of Holly? Is this Hollywood movie? Because you should yeah. stop. Like, yeah. if you want me back, I'll be back tomorrow. But don't tell me the client right. is dead. Yeah. Um, it reminded me about all the fallen soldiers that I lost and every yeah. everything I've been through, even including my mother's situation. I cried hard for the kid because nobody wrapped his their hands around him and cared for him. You a tough guy and you got weapons, but God forbid for you to love that person, whoever that is, because you want to, you got to get home to your family. 
this this is the stuff that brings rap pack to life right here. Yeah, so absolutely. I asked questions about what happened and everything, and then I I emailed the the the, the security company that hired me. I told you I said, listen, you should have never put anybody on him that didn't care for him. I said you guys were in it for the money and you didn't care. I said you were supposed to do your checks every hour and an hour, not because you invaded his privacy, making sure he was okay. Yeah. What happened from this time period to time period? I'm very logistical sound. Do not play with me. I was upset. Not not because I, I missed money, because I cared for the kid and I put my hands around him and y'all let him take his own life. Yeah. And I didn't even get invited because they knew I was gonna light that fire. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that's the story. I, I I'm a carrier that from day one. Like Harry bought me some stuff when I was in South America and I kept it. And yeah. on my phone right now, I still have this text message because that was live. That was in December. It's right. now, what is it, May? So he passed away in January and then COVID-19 hit. So I just ramped it up because I said, you know what? Me and Remy care so much about our guys that when we land our first government contract with Rat Pack, there will not be no net nothing. You're going to get paid every two weeks or whatever, he, whatever system he comes up with, but you're not going to sit in a hole and say, I worked for these guys 30 or 45 days and I still ain't got paid because the client didn't get paid that's ridiculous yeah. that's yeah. what i want to hit on because at the end of the day you're not caring for that client you know what confuses me about that is when you get a contract you can easily take that to the bank and say hey look i need a little bit of a front loan here so that i can pay some people the what? bank will be all over that faster than a pig in shit. I got it. I got to open. I got to open here for the lenders, you know, that you can't do it because if I have to, I got, we got, we got a lot of money out there in invoices. I'm like, I need to pay my guys. I don't care if I take 3% loss or whatever, I'm going to pay them. Correct. Yeah. And, and I don't understand this play of games or, or yeah. BS. I, yeah. I, I don't understand. I, it blows my mind. Yeah, there, there's a hundred different ways to pay understand. people. They just don't get it. They just, they would rather see the profit margin at the end of the day. And then, yeah, they, they don't. We, we get, we get all the contractors. You know? they're, they're fine. They'll, they'll be good. Yeah. But your staff are the people that live paycheck to paycheck. They, they need that for their rent money. Like you don't understand this. Like right. I know for our company, if somebody is fucked up on their pay, I will shit a brick and I will make sure that they get paid. I don't care how they do it, but it makes it happen. Yeah. That's, I, mean, that's I lost a lot. And the guy's like, you know, tell me, I was like, man, I don't care. I don't care. I go to my little bank. If I need to put my own bank negative, I'm freaking, yeah. I'm like, I, they call us, we had a, another job and they call us and told us, it rained. I got all my guys, you know, they say they cancel their jobs. And when I work with us, we drove to Orlando, they cancel everything the whole weekend. Yeah. They worked for two days. And, and I was like, hey, my guys getting paid all, all, the, all the money, correct? Because they canceled. Right. I was like, no, according to this and the subcontractor, the subcontractor, they have this clause in here and here, there. I'm like, oh, you're going to be one of those, huh? Yeah. And, yeah, exactly. You know, I said, okay. And I got frustrated with the guy. The guy said, I'll never call me again. You, I said, bro, I never want to work with you again. But I freaking went to the bank and I told all my guys to the end of the weekend. Because yeah. it's not their fault that they have to cancel oh. their jobs because the rain came. That should yeah. be the client's fault, but whoever playing the subcontract, and that's why they do, they don't put the name there, the subcontract, the subcontract. So whoever is the government, we want to go there, we want to tell them how bad. Yeah. I was in Puerto Rico. You know, remember when they criticized Trump in the United States for not giving money and all that? And I was there and I understand how Puerto Rico works. And I, I saw with my eyes all the food in the stuff. They didn't have FEMA, don't supposed to be uh, the first option. Each city and each state has their system for yeah. disaster yeah. prevention. Then right. FEMA comes and helps. And then you got MDMS and you got security contractors. Yeah. All this money, all this stuff was spent. Security contractors were making the subcontractors probably were making a thousand dollars a day per person. They're paying us us maybe like three hundred dollars a day per person. All the food is there. They don't care about the client. They don't no. care about the people. And no. the Puerto Rican guys working this in the United States and in the pressing and this and that. What happened one year later, two years later, three years later? They just when the earthquakes happened. They just find all this stuff that was lost in Maria that we that we sent that our country sent to Puerto Rico, a stack, you know, in some yeah. uh, in warehouses yeah. like that. Yeah. And nobody knows that. And I saw, and I remember friends telling me, "It's like no, it doesn't happen like that. They have all the opportunities. Yeah. Whoever's running the system didn't do it. And then the contracting people. What is happening? COVID nineteen right now. Millions of contracts. They created all these buildings, all these tents, all ten cities, all that money, 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 money. 
Yeah. And then two weeks later, they see 10 patients, no patients, yeah. and they break it down. What happened with that money? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 100%. So it's just, it's, it's going to be. It's going to be interesting. Gonna be how, okay. Uh, so how has the uh, COVID affected your guys' company? Good or bad? Well, we, we have an estate of uh, the union with the Rat Pack tonight on Zoom. And um, when, when COVID-19, so what's crazy is um, when COVID-19 hit, and I pray for everybody's souls that it affected their families and everything, but living in um, isolation, as veterans, we do that already. So that, it didn't affect us. Like, we, okay, yeah. we're here. We'd rather not leave the house anyway. Okay, we're here. <laughs> yeah. So, so now you need- like me anyway. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. So now you need security. So as um, soon as it hit, right before the state started locking down their states, we already had nine guys in another state working for an undisclosed, undisclosed location with COVID-19. Um, we were working with the, uh, air, the federal marshal, so we couldn't broadcast or whatever we was doing, but we, we did what we had to do. Um, Remy led the team and um, it picked up. So when he took the team to, to Georgia, I scaled up the marketing. Okay, we're not spending money on little things now. We here now, let's put the money into marketing. Let's go out there. Every time we do a job, we show what we do. We have our mask on, we talk about it, we are it. We start talking about the past. And because since everybody's at home and you know, on internet, social media, we're going to attack the airways like the matrix. So what I did was we attacked it all social media brands, let them know who we were, reintroduced ourselves again. This is what we're doing. This is what we, and we're actively telling people, I asked you for help years ago. Now we come in for government contracts. Now we got our capability statement. Now I need someone to show me actively how to push that button like war dogs how to get them contracts because that's where we're going. And so what it did was shook up a lot of my security friends, companies I used to work for in industries because it was like, oh, now you compete with us. Oh, that's, that's what it always was. Like, I don't think, I don't know if you understood in, in my head how I, how I looked at Rat Pack. Like I never thought of Rat Pack to be small. Oh, you guys got to just um, announce to be the sponsored ambassador for the Super Bowl. Yeah, because I lost the first Super Bowl in Miami, but you don't see all that work. You don't see that I cried when I lost and I got the email and I didn't, I didn't even show Remy because yeah. I didn't even tell him I bid it for. I just did it because that's how I am. I do it when it comes like, oh, yeah, we got it. But at the end of the day, that hurt me the most because we was at the same level we at now. But you didn't take a chance on me. But now you do. But I, I was happy to network with a bunch of good people and put ourselves in position to say, you know what? The world slowed up, but we sped up. And we're we're no longer we're no longer small. We want to be able to let people know this is what we're coming for. We was able to um, obtain an office because we was all working out of my house. Um, yep. But now we got an office, and now we're looking at a bigger office. But at the end of the day, this is what me and Remy all dreamed about since day one. Like this is not new. It was just took time. We lost three vice presidents. We gained some awesome people. We lost agents. Gain yeah. some people, some people stick or stuck around, some people didn't, but this is us now, and we want to be able to put our, push our best foot forward. And in COVID-19, we helped and we put our agents in the field, but as Rat Pack as a whole, we didn't even put in for no loan because we wanted to save that money for other companies. I knew that what was in me and Remy's head was priceless. Yes, we need it, and yes, we deserve it, but I think it's other companies that are starting up or, or need it that they can use it it wasn't time and I'm very a believer on the, the right time, the right place. And at the end of the day, this is what we're, we're doing. Me and Remy looked at each other and said, Hey, is this the time you want to push the button on the loan? Not yet. When the world starts back up, we go get our first loan. Yeah. Because in between me and Remy both, we didn't put in over a hundred thousand dollars of yeah. our own money Absolutely. and lost nights with our kids, our families uh, affected our mental. We bought all in. So this is us. It's not like all these guys are ex Rangers and S special operations and they think they badasses so they know the security industry no it was like i went through so many emotions i cried yeah. i laughed i smiled i was I angry a yeah. lot of stuff it's hard being an entrepreneur seriously yeah. see my, i got a schedule that i wake up every morning and meditate because if i don't i can't put that energy into my employees. you're also an entrepreneur in the security industry that operates 24 hours a day seven days a week no holidays like no it's, holidays. it's it is yes. what it is yeah you want sleep 
find another fucking job. <laughs> what we did was um, we put in a little battle rhythm that um, every Thursday we give our guys off since we do work throughout the weekends. Yeah. And um, we set our company up as like a, a, a battle staff. So yeah. um, we're 24 hours. So if you was to call the number and you needed something, we would spin up our agents. You want a D license? You want a G license? Who do you want? Pick, pick your agent and then we put them there. That's it.